Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay, let's, let's get started. Uh, it's my pleasure today to introduce Wei Feng Sun from the University of Central Florida. And he's going to tell us about his uh, thesis work and the work that was presented at SIGGRAPH last year about how to uh, capture really nice global illumination rendering and uh, dynamic scenes using wavelets. So Wei Feng, take it away. Thank you. And I'm Wei Feng. I'm from UCI in Orlando. And Really nice to be here and to we'll talk to you, very famous guys, <laughs> very big guys in, in graphics and computer vision. Yeah, I'm really glad to be here. And first, I will talk something about the, the work in the field of render, just the stimulate the lighting, and then followed by my work, my dissertation work. And then I, I propose some initial ideas. And I think for the field of render, the problem is just the way one digital picture, taken by a digital picture. And the rendering for uh, graphics guy, automated guys, that we want to reproduce this picture. And we want to manipulate the content of this picture. For example, we want to put an icon in this picture. And want to change the, the lighting in this picture. For example, we think that the light sound is here. We want to make the light sound here. Or we want to change the space, make it in another kind of space. In any way you like it, we just want to change it. And still, after the, the change, the multiple will be too much more. Oh. Sorry. Thank you. And still, the, the changed result, the manipulated, the new result, the simulated result should be, looks nice. And this is very difficult. And uh, for example, this scene, I mean, this is, this is in this picture, there's another problem. I think that is hard to, to simulate. That is because of the noise. This picture, there are many, many noise. And to my knowledge, I, I don't know there are any noise functions. We can overlay the picture, or just we can capture that noise functions. Is it the noise? Was it the fact that you have like fog? Uh, we have fog, but still we have noise overlaid. That noise maybe came from the you know, camera. Or the fog is, this is fog. But here you see all those trees, there are some noises. So are you saying you're trying to simulate camera noise, or you want to I, I mean, this is the problem, because we want to simulate something that a camera can capture. This one is the, the noise may be induced by the camera. And in the simulation system, we also want to reproduce such kind of things besides the natural lighting. This is another one that is difficult because of the light goes into the surface of the object. They call it the subsurface scattering, something like that. And also here, the, the geometries that is very delicate, that difficult to simulate it. This one, I think, there's no, there's no strong subsurface scattering, but we have some very difficult to simulate surface geometries. That's here, and here, and here. And I think the, the best way to do it is to just generate those procedurally. But we have no idea what are those procedure functions. And this function, we must get it from the real data, and we 
we process the data, we get the parameters, and we generate it. Lighting is not a big issue here. This one is just uh, the natural picture. I love natural pictures. I noticed that for the games or something like that, all the artificial lighting there, the scene looks very, very dull, very dark. But here we have very bright light, and we have very nice colors. And the whole picture gives us a very nice feeling. This one is a close up to some pipers, and it's really nice. And I think the, the, for the real time rendering, because I'm, we are doing the real time rendering, here, if you look at this picture from the viewpoint of the data compression, we know that there are many, many redundancies. You see here, those colors, there are some redundancies. Here, here, and here, and here, there are redundancies. And the highlight here, the very the many coherent redundancies. In the compression, we can compress this picture, I mean, with many, with very good result. But in the real-time rendering, it's very difficult to, I mean, not difficult, it's, I mean, it's hard or no satisfying previous work that we exploit those kind of redundancies. It's a challenge to the real-time rendering. Also, it's an opportunity for the real-time rendering. This one is another picture, and we have different kind of objects, and in the past years, there are lots of work in the field of texture synthesis, but I think they all failed to do this work. I, I believe there's something in this picture that we cannot do with the previous work. This one, <laughs> it's something related to the subsurface scattering, and the, some researchers, some systems, they use multiple textures to simulate this. And I think that maybe it's not a good idea to do that way. All those, I just want to tell that every picture is a story, and there are something that we can do, and there are something that we cannot do. This is another picture. This is the, the light here, the light source. And we have this surface. It will be nice if we can get the parameters for this surface and integrate it with the lighting functions. There's some previous work in this picture. And this one, I think this is the ultimate dream for the real-time rendering, that we can manipulate the light. We do it in real time but we cannot do it now. This is another picture. We just change the light. This one is my favorite. I think this is the, if we can do this, we can see that we solved the 90% of the whole graphic system. This is really, really difficult to do that. Even though we have a lot, even though we can lots of money, we can pay to hire some artist, some, it's difficult, really difficult. I, and my, I use all those pictures. I just want to say that my understanding to the graphics is that we just want to simulate the nature, the natural world, not those things like the, the video games that used, the very black, very dull, very, we don't have any vivid colors. The graphics is that we should have, looks exactly the, the natural image, the natural light. And there are some approaches, there are, very, there are some very successful approaches to do those kind of work. For example, the texture mapping. This one, the texture map is just my thinking that we, did, we use the digital, we use the camera, we capture that one from exactly this angle, this distance, this kind of lighting. We get this picture and we show it on the screen. We draw it, we can manipulate it. The, the technique is very simple, but the result is really good. Very nice lighting result. And it is widely used in the games or in the, in the current computer graphics systems. But the problem with this one is that here, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten leaves. I, I want to say, oh, that's too much. I only want two leaves. That's difficult to manipulate it. Use the texture mapping technique. Or let's say we want the the light. It seems that the highlight from that direction. Okay, we want to change it. Light cast from here. That is difficult. Oh, this one is red color. I want some green colors. No, it's difficult. But there are some, I mean, this technique is very successful. Then there are some uh, related work in this direction. That's interesting. And to improve the texture mapping, the problem with the texture mapping is that we sample it only from one sample point. We can increase the number of sample points. For example, we can do it spatially. We sample here, 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 all those, that's in the light field or the looming graph, uh, something like that. Or we can do it spatially. We take it here, after five minutes, we take another picture, temporary. We can use, it, use the video camera. And there are some work, in, just in the last year, the four or five work using the spatial coherence. And not spatial coherence, just the spatially increase the sample rate. They get lots of data, and they did, a lot of, they did some very good work. But this is still the sample. We take the sample of the world. And the problem with this approach is that we, we cannot manipulate the, those, I mean, and without any change, we must interpolate it. Because let's say we want a different viewpoint, or we want different uh, light directions, light conditions, we need to do interpolation. But the problem with all those kind of work is that we take digital pictures, or we take pictures. The picture is in the pixel domain. We have a lot of pixels. When we do the interpolation, we also work in the pixel domain. But for the graphics, we do the rendering. I mean, I had worked in the, in the, in the last past month. I worked in ATI, and I, I'm working with the driver. And it seems that I'm verified that in the hardware, everything, that is triangle, vertices. In the rendering, in the graphics, we work on vertices. But all the approaches, that works on the pixels. It's two different domains. One is the pixel domain, another one is the vertex domain. That's totally two different domains. And we cannot, I mean, impact it. I mean, it is very reasonable that no matter how good you do interpolate in the pixel domain, I mean, finally, the result is not that good as those you do it in the vertex domain. And in the, in the, in the current practical, I mean, um, application, we, uh, for example, in the, in the games or in some work, we always do it in the vertex domain. For example, in the CGI, we do not do it in the pixel domain. And here, for, in the, for the interpolation, I think there's a, another related topic here is the compression, because previously I, I'm working with my advisor on the compression work. And my feeling is that the compression is just that we find a redundancy. And then we take, advantage, we take advantage of those redundancies, and we can, we can compress it. And in the, in the compre compression field, there are many different topic, topics and different techniques. Some of them, the very most important one is the filters. We can use Fourier transform, Fourier filters. We can use wavelet filters. And if, if you look at the real-time rendering in the past few years, starting from 2001, you can see it's very clear that all those papers, they're just following the data compression technique. They are, using, they are just working on filters. And I'm also following this direction, this approach. And uh, it's very uh, fortunate that I, I can publish a paper and graduate. And I, I like my advisor to believe that I'm doing the compression work, because he is doing the compression work. And, I call my work it's compressor domain real time rendering, yeah, and graduating. It's really nice. But the problem I told that the interpolation because we work on in the pixel domain, it uh, determines that the result is not that good, even though that in the current in the in the thick graph there are some stations do image enhancement, image. Uh, processing or video enhancement, video processing. I believe, uh, I mean, in the long term, maybe 50, 500 years, 
of uh, 50 years, and someday, I mean, it cannot not that good compared with those we work in the vertex domain. And but we still want to do use this sampling technique. We sample the real world because we have this is the reference data. We can get it, and we take digital pictures, and we want to get some content from those uh, pictures. For example, we have this picture. We can get a lot of information from this picture. This is just one example. For example, here, this one, we, we can notice that we human beings, we can notice that there's some light source here. Cast the shadows. And we can see that there's some geometry, some depth information in this picture. And there's some different kind of materials. Some, I think this is the, a chicken, something like that, and clothes. Lots of different information. And we can, we human beings, we have a very advanced brain, lots of cells. And we can, lots of, I mean, a very big, very huge memory system and a very nice processing unit. We can infer something here, lots of information. And currently, this is the, the approach that computer vision guys, they are doing. They just want to recover all those kind of information. But there's a problem here that some of those information, I mean, there's some uncertainty in this picture because this picture is only one sample. It cannot capture all the information. For example, I just give one example here. Yes. Can you tell, can, maybe there's something under the table, there's a teapot or there's a bunny, something like that. This sample, uh, no, this sample, this, this picture, we cannot recover it. And uh, all in another way is that my feeling is that to recover light, to recover structure, to recover types, material, that is good. But our goal is that this is only the intermediate steps. We have some intermediate results. Our goal is that we have the light, we recover the light, we recover the structure, we recover the material. The final goal is that we just want to simulate a new image based on this image. And that image looks, have some relationship with this image, and everyone believes that that image is derived from this image, and that is a valid image, and a, most preferably, that is a very nice image, yes? to try to infer something that hasn't been observed. Mm -hmm. So I'm not quite sure what your point is here. Yeah, yes, yeah, because I did not mention my point here. My point here is that we recover light, all those single elements, maybe for in the terms of our human brain, it's not that the lighting or the structure or the depth of the material that is important when we do the simulation. Maybe the, the, the combination of those terms, or the partial combination of those terms, that is more important than we just recover those terms. I will give some uh, uh, details later. My understanding is that for the current vision technique, we recover all those contents. That is good. But that is in terms of the computer vision field. In terms of our graphics, we do the rendering. We do not need all those exact solutions. We can recover from real world the partial solutions of those. It, that is a combination, one important uh, saying that that's the combination of those terms. And we, if we can recover that, we can integrate that into the rendering system. 
And we can render something that, that is in the everyday life, but that is difficult to use the previous technique to render. This is my, my point, is that the computer vision is difficult, and it just wants to recover the single the element. I think that which I want to recover some intermediate partial combinations of all of those elements. Uh, any questions? Okay, let's go back to the graphics. In the graphics, the approach <laughs> combined with our part by the vision technique is that. Let's see, the problem, define the problem first, is that I want to generate a new image. Let's say my code is there. I want to generate a new image that is sitting there. I take a picture here, here, here. I want to generate a, a new image that, that code is put outside this building. And that is how different lighting. And here that is the red color, that material. I want to use some other kind of materials, like silk, something like that. And the approach, the currently the approach, is that we human eyes, we take a picture and we tell we we take some we have somebody. I say, okay, you you do the geometric work, you make the three D mesh of this code. Okay, we have another artist. Okay, you make very nice textures. And another guy, okay, you integrate all those in the 3D map, that's the Maya. And then we have the rendering system. We can use lots of global illumination system. Okay, I forgot, I forgot one thing, the light source, the light. We can also uh, design the light in, the, in, the, in, the, in some systems. And we do all those global illumination work and we can have that result, very nice result, maybe very, very nice result. But the problem is that here, the second step, the decomposition, we are doing it using our human brains. We have some body to do that, and we cannot automate this process. And maybe we can do it, but the result is not, not that good. It's a problem, I see, in everybody's side, and I want to work on this field. And my previous work is just that, into this framework, just make it in real time. And next, I will go to my, my work, previous work. The starting from the rendering equation. We know that the rendering equation is the recursive functions. The radians is a function of the radians, of the lighting, of the visibilities, of the BRDFs. And this, this is the reduced form of the rendering equation. We did not consider the medium, something like that. And that is slow. And the real-time rendering work in the previous year is that we just make approximations. We do not need to solve the exact solution of this system. That is far beyond the global illumination. We just do the approximation, and we can do it really fast. And in fact, here, this one is just a similar approximation to the real world, to the real physics. No one knows the exact solution. I mean, only God knows. One approximation is that all those functions we approximate in the same post form. We have two factors. We have the radiance transfer, that is called M, and we have the light source. That, this is just one example. We can, here we use the light source. Also, we can use the BRDF or something like that. And in this case, we only have the multiplication of two functions, and this is the convolution. In the convolution, we know that in the, uh, in the signal processing or in the field of data compression, everyone is for the convolution or in the computer vision. If we know the convolution, we can accelerate it in the frequency domain and or in the basis domain more generally. And this is exactly the, the, the direction of the trend in the past few years, in the field of real-time rendering, lots of C-graph work just following this track, this track, and 
just to do some improvement, extension to this very simple form. And in my point of view is that previously we have the double function product integration, two functions, that is the two, and the two work. And then we have three functions. We have three functions, that is the, normally the convolution, we only have two functions. And three functions, we still want to do it in the frequency domain or in the basic domain, that is the very high of the frequent uh, convolution. And the, it did work in 2004 in the C graph. And my work is just that extend this, extend the three function integration, product integration to four functions. And I have some result. And that result, just we have the result. I, I found that we can really, in fact, we can extend it beyond four functions. We have as many as functions here. We do the, we compute the product and the integration of this function. We can do it in the, in the basic domain, the basic function we choose is the high wavelet basic functions. And we find some theoretical result, and we apply it in the field of real-time rendering, because this is exactly the real-time rendering problem. And we created the demo, and that's it. And it, we, I talked about the multiple functions, and here, uh, this is one example I use. I prefer to use this example. These are the multiple functions of that uh, representation. And the most important term in those multiple functions, I think the previous computer vision work, they intentionally to ignore that is the occlusion. There are two kinds of occlusions. Currently, in computer vision, my understanding that the occlusion they are talking about is the occlusion with respect to the camera. Let's say we have, I'm, I have the camera here. I'm, I'm walking, and this computer screen is partially blocked because I'm walking. This is the occlusion with respect to the camera. But there's another kind of occlusion. I see this is the light source. The hand is here. I'm changing. And because this is the occlusion with respect to the light source. In, our, in computer graphics, we know that light source equals to the camera. There's no big difference. And this is the occlusion. And uh, there are many occlusions. Just the, as many objects you have in the scene, you have as many as occlusions. For example, here, in this surface point, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have two tables. We have three chairs. And then we have five occlusion functions. I can only draw it four functions here because we don't have enough space. And uh, I think this is a previous work. In the future, uh, a very possible direction is that we can do something. Just to manipulate the occlusion functions inside the scene, not with respect to the camera, just with respect to the imaging system. Oh, maybe I'm not clear. Let's go to the, this one. <laughs> it, uh, we have all those functions. This is the light source. And uh, in terms of the real-time rendering, in my previous work, I noticed that if we just change the, go to different point, we have different occlusions. You see, we go to the next vertex, the occlusion is changed. And it just the, the, the writings here, it's just the multiplication and the integration of all those occlusions. And uh, I came up with uh, solution to just to solve the multiplication and integration of those functions, all those functions, as many as functions, efficiently. And that is the work. And that is, I call it the multifunction product integration, multifunction product integral. And all those are those functions. We just multiply them 
and when we take the integration and we have the readings. And here, those functions, in the most popular term, we can see that the functions uh, have high frequency information or all frequency content because here black and white that's really high frequency and the light source the environment light the all frequency lighting they like this term and all of those this function we can in the random equation or in the reflectance equation we can write it in this term all those are occlusions and we just simplify them as n plus 2 functions. We multiply together. And the approach is quite this simple. For this function, we project this function to the basis domain. We choose one basis. Yes? You choose n? Uh, you mean n plus 2 or n? OK. Right. Whatever the value of n is. Uh, that is, I mean, What's the value of n? That is determined by the by the thing. You have let's say in this thing, you want to compute the radiance here, and you have the light. This is the environment light, and you have the BRDF, and you have the occlusions. So n is the, just the summation of those functions. And the occlusion is determined by the number of objects you have in the scene. But the, the, the definition of an object is kind of artificial, right? Yes. I mean. So how do you decide how many objects there are? Yes. In this scene, this is a single object. I can take out this table. And this is another single object. This is another single, single. We have one, two, three, four, five uh, different five different objects. Any of those objects can move in the scene, and we also have the floor. This is totally. I mean, if you want to really want to fill these two objects together, you can decrease the number of n by one. Uh, I, I have a demo later. But, but the point is that you tabulated visibility functions around each one of these objects. As yes, objects. yes. So that's why it's not, it's, arbitrary, it's not arbitrary in the sense that the author has tabulated how these things. <coughs> you know, well, and and it's kind of like the number of objects that you want to move after the fact. Yes, say, yes exactly. You're never going to move any yeah. objects. So, suppose I have a foldable chair, and I can fold the chair. So that can't be regarded as a single object, right? right? Mm -hmm. Uh, then the hinge will be separate objects and so on. Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. You, you can do the decomposition any way you like. But the, yes, yes. The, the limitation or the assumption of our real-time rendering work is that those functions, we can do pre-computation. The occlusion information, we can do pre-computation. So in your case, if you have a folding chair, let's say you have arms, this part and this part, you need to pre-compute the occlusion surrounding this part and surrounding this part. So when you say pre-computation, uh -huh. does that mean? I'm trying to get it exactly. So here you have a chair. Uh -huh. So we're now going to be able to move the chair around. Mm -hmm. Can we like turn it upside down, uh, rotate it? I mean, what, what do you mean by we can move it? OK. What, what this chair, we can, that's here, we can move it. Translation and uh, scaling, make it bigger or smaller, and we can create a new chair based on this chair. Uh, we can uh, we cannot do anything like rotation. We cannot do rotation because rotation. You know that we need to pre-compute the occlusion. Rotation will change the occlusion, and we are using the wavelet, and uh, that's really difficult. Well, some of translation. Uh, Not as much as rotation, but you know, there will be some. Yes, some, some certain forms of rotation. Yeah. Another limitation is you can't, you can't put objects inside the convex. You, you can only be outside the convex hull. Uh, Not exactly. 
you here we do the sampling. You can let's say this, we take out this table, this table. We sample it. That's it. We talk about this table. We can sample it here. We sample it here. This is the outside of the convex hull. But we can sample it here under the table. That is inside the convex hull. But we can do that, and we can put objects there. Because we do sampling, we can interpret the visibility, the occlusions. Convex hull is not that uh, a big limiting factor. Again, just to, to be kind of clear, right now you have three of the same chair. Yes. Two of the same table. Yes. So why can't you just have two instead of five? <laughs> yes, we we have two. You are right. In the in the in the in the, we only store two objects. So, but here you're showing four or something like that. Yeah, because I will give a demo later. Originally, we have two objects, and we can cr clone object, clone new. We originally we have one table and one chair. We can clone two new chairs and one new table, and and do the real time rendering. And compared to the previous work, this is so, a new. So for this scene, mm -hmm. really we only need, say, three objects. Is that right? Yes. Chair, table, floor. Yes. Yeah, another work, all those occlusion functions, we don't need, I mean, separate. When we do the sampling, we only need to sample two objects. We only need to sample one chair and one table. I guess, I, I guess my confusion mostly is the, inc the occlusion function seems to have both the geometry of the object mm -hmm. and where that object is relative to the sampling point. Sampling point. Does that mean I have a full sort of, kind of planoptic or full, um, say, a light field of the... Of the you uh, only have one, but you uh, sample at four points. Sorry. Okay. And in this case, you, we, for example, the we have three chairs. When we do the sampling, we only sample one chair. Right, but from how many locations? Just uh, from, I don't understand. We like, then the sampling location is very, it's huge. Maybe twenty thousand. Okay. So we actually have a, a sort of a, a not a light field. It's really a, an occlusion field. Yes, occlusion field exactly. Okay. And that occlusion field is what dimension? Uh, that's it. Three dimensional. It seems like, we, at least for the convex hull, it'd be four, right? I think to go around the outside. Mm -hmm. It's five dimensional. I mean, for every point in the volume, you have right. it's it's like if you stay yeah, outside. I'm good. So your I'm point good. was just if you stay outside the convex hull, it could be four. If you were allowed to go inside, then it would have to be five. So I think he's storing it as a 5D thing anyways. But okay. Yeah, it's 5D. Five, five, it's so easy. it's 5D, so that lets you go inside the convex. Yeah. Okay. So you have one 5D occlusion function mm -hmm. for each object. Yes, and okay. we pre-compute it. Okay. We now I understand. Point. Okay. So it would work if I put a lamp on top of one of the tables. Uh, put a what? A lamp, a light source on top of the table. That would work as well. Uh, Another assumption of this work is the environment light, distance light. We do not support a local light source. Okay. And for the local light source, it's just a, you can think the local light source is also an object. It's just sample. Here is the occlusion field. You can sample the light field, something like that. Yeah, but you have to throw out the guys who are casting shadows past where the light source is. It will introduce new problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and our work, my work, is just that to compute those function product integration fast in a faster way. And this function we project it into a basis domain. This is a you know, basis function representation. Capital FI is the summation of some multi product, um, some product. The product is the uh, basis coefficient and basis functions. <laughs> and because this is a multiple integration, multiple product, 
can extend it. And the outside integration will go inside. And we have this one. And we call that one the integral coefficient. And we need to find a way to calculate this integral coefficient because those the coefficient, this coefficient can be computed, but we need a efficient solution to compute this. And we focus on the high wavelength, and we find a solution to compute the capital C, the integral coefficient. And based on that, we design the algorithm. The algorithm is really complex, and I will not talk about, talk about it here. I only talk about the how to do this. And the reason we do it in the basic domain, that is similar to the data compression, because that is there's some redundancy, coherence. And we can exploit the coherence. We discard zero values, only concentrate on significant coefficient values, make it really fast. And the hard scaling basis functions, everyone is familiar with it. And this is the wavelet basis functions. We can do dilation and translation. And we have lots of basic functions. And this is the 2D instead of 1D. And here, this is the mother, <coughs> I'm sorry, this is the uh, mother scaling basic function. And this is the mother wavelet basic function. We have three different kinds of mother wavelet basic function because that is two dimensional. And this is one example. When we do the transformation, wavelet transformation, an example of all the wavelet filters we use. And all those filters, we can combine it into one tray. And let's go to the problem is that we compute the integral coefficient. This is one example. This is integral coefficient. It's just the multiplication of some basic functions and then take the integration. Let's make it simpler. We don't do the integration. We only compute the multi we only compute the product of those basic functions. This is one example. We have 10 basic functions. This is 2D high wavelet basic function. We need to compute the product of this one. And the, the result is this one. We want a quick solution, efficient solution, a formula to do this. And we start from two, and then we extend it to multiple. Or two basic high basic functions the multi product of these two, that is simple, equal to this one. The product of two, this is two wavelet basic functions. It's one scaling basic function. And we do it like this. We look at this quarter. This is positive, positive, multiply, we have the positive. And then, let me use this. Yes, we look at the second quarter, negative, negative, and then we have the positive. We look at the third quarter and the last quarter, all those quarters are positive, so we have a scaling basic function. And uh, another example is that we have two wavelet basic functions, but they have different support, and uh, the product in this case, it's also not that difficult. We just look at the quarter of the smaller, of the wavelet filter with the smaller support. We do it one, this is the one quarter, is positive, negative, we have the negative one because the minus is going outside of it. Yeah, we will negate it. It just means that the product of two basic functions is still one basic function. The product of two basic functions is still one basic function and is scaled by something. Then we call it a sign of magnitude. That is, it can be positive, can be negative, can also be zero. And it's just, uh, I give all the, some examples here. The product of two basic functions, it can be positive, can be zero, can also be negative, but it's also a, a filter, a wavelet filter, a wavelet basic function. And then we can extend it to multiple functions. 
And the product, this is some examples. The product of multiple functions, we can prove that. It's not that difficult to generalize it. It's also a basic function. It can be a scaling basic function, can also be a wavelet basic function. Anyway, it is the basic function. And in this example, we have 10 basic functions. You can notice that. This is the type of the basic function. This is the product of the, all those basic functions. If you, if you multiply those five basic functions, you also have this type of basic functions. Just the, the type of the product of all those basic functions is only determined by the type of those basic functions in the lowest scale, with the smallest support. And then the next thing is that we need, to support, we need to determine from those five basic functions how to guide the type of the result. It's just not that difficult. We just count the total number of wavelet filters because we know that in that certain, all these three, those four, Wavelet filters. There are only three kinds of filters. We count the parity. For this kind of filter, we have three. The parity is one. For the second type, we have one. The third type, we have one. So it's one, one, one. We go to the table, we know that the result is a scaling filter. If that is simple. So we have, we have the result. This is the sign of now, another step is that we need to calculate the, this one, the sign and the magnitude. It's just uh, we show that just to calculate the, the level of each wavelet filter, sum them together, and minus the one of the lowest with the smallest support. We, ha we came up with this formula. And uh, because our intention is to compute the integral coefficient, that is that. Uh, integration of the product of basic functions. And we have the, in the previous slide, we have the product of basic function. And then we take the integration. That is not a big step. And we have this result. And we call it the integral, the, the, the generalized high integral coefficient theorem. And based on this, we design the algorithm. That is the tree structure algorithm. That is complex. Maybe five pages is not enough to explain the algorithm. And we can solve this, the multifunction product integration, efficiently. So just trying to understand your own contribution. Has anybody else noticed before that the product of R wavelets produces another R wavelet and sort of tabulate it, you know, created the sort of tabular um, style of not in the, the Not in product. the literature. Sorry? It's not in the, it's not published. Maybe so someone haven't... noticed it, but not published. No, but you haven't seen it in, in, mm -hmm. in the literature at all. Yeah, the, the most closely related work is that we have three functions. Multiply and integration, Stanford guy, they use high wavelength. But there's only three functions. We extend it to multiple functions. Right, but this general notion that our wavelengths are closed under uh, I did not notice it. I read some books and did not find that one. So about human signal processing literature, says anything about mm. I did not find it. To my knowledge, I did not find it. And I, I think because this wavelet, high wavelet is very special. Maybe there are some other wavelet have the similar Similar things. And that was the next sort of question. Do other, do, is this something special to our wavelets, or is it, does this generalize to other? Um, my feeling is that this is not a special to how wavelet. There should be a family of wavelet filters uh, have something like this. But the, when I submitted the paper, there are some reviewers. And they don't think so. They think they're the only, only high wavelength. 
So as far as you know, you just don't know the answer to that. Yeah, we don't know that. This is the open problem. And uh, I think the, because the, the wavelet, the good thing for the wavelet is that we can derive the filters use some mathematical equations. We give some mathematical equations that is correspond to the property of the wavelet filters. We can basically solve those equations and we can get the father or the mother wavelet filters. And if, as long as only if we can find those basic equations, we can solve the, the just some equations, a couple of equations. It's very possible that we can have a new family of wavelet filters, have those kind of property, because you know that hair is, is very limited. It has a very small compact, a uh, very small support. It's not that smoothy. I mean, many problems. And in another way, in, in data compression, we don't use hair. We use some Dolby's, some complex wavelet filters. And compared in terms of the time complexity, this is our approach. And compared to some published result, similar problem, ours is, is very favorable. Here n is the total number of functions. And small m, that is the total number of significant coefficient or non-zero coefficient. And capital M, that is the total number of coefficient. In yeah, ours, it's really good. And because we are doing the real-time rendering, I mean, the, the previous slide, the algorithm compared to this one, that is, the time complexity is good, but in reality, that is slow, a couple of seconds to render one frame. We want real-time rendering. So we make further assumptions and we, here, this is n plus two function, product and integration. We decompose this n plus two function into two part, the first part and the second part. And we can, this one, we can pre-compute this in the wrong time. I mean, we compute this. Once we compute this, we have this. We just change this, and we can do the rendering. In, in, in the terms of real-time rendering, we can change light source. We can change viewpoint. Or we can change object. Just translate it. And here, yeah. Here, t is the multiplication of n plus 1 functions. If you do it in the wavelet basis domain, if you do it in the basic domain, this is capital T, a smaller tk, that is the wavelet coefficient. The project data, you can see that it's also very similar to the previous slide. We also have here we have the integral coefficient. So the function is, is similar. And here's the demo. We have two objects here. Oh, oops. I'm really sorry. I can show it here. <laughs> oh yeah. We have two objects, we change the light. This is the environment light. Look at the directional highlight and the shadows. And we can create a new objects. Uh, not new, yeah, we can derive new objects from the two mother objects. And we can change the viewpoint. Something like that. So what you're doing is it's mostly the shadows and stuff that you're, yes. that you're doing with all this. Okay. Uh, light the and shadows. Is still polygons. Triangles. Hmm? Triangle. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm using the the three D max. So I, it, it's interesting now that I, I'm up closer to this than I was at SIGGRAPH. I, I see artifacts on the shadows to say the uh, legs of the chair. Mm -hmm. Is that because of not enough sampling at the receiver or is it because yeah, of right. the organization of the of the sources? It's here, the triangle. You you yeah, see talking about here because we have triangles. And here, the total number of vertices, the sampling, the sample rate is not high enough. So we have aliasing effect. Well, are you sure it's not because of um, inadequate sampling of the, of the source fields? That is, you 
you got a visibility field for that chair. And you're going to sample it in between the samples that you took, and maybe you get artifacts that way. Anyway, that is because the sampling rate is not high enough. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I got your point. I got your point. Yeah. So, let me, so just so I understand, I'm still confused. I got your point. You're sampling, what is one sample? Tell me what one sample is. One sample. Here, there are two, we are talking about two kinds of sampling. One is that here we have triangles. The surface is a triangle. Sure. That is a kind, one kind of sample. So what is it? Receiver point sample. Yeah, the receiver plane. Another sample is that because here we pre-computed the visibility or occlusion. Right. That is another sampling. And how did you sample the occlusion? Yeah, uh, I, I did two kinds of sampling. One is that we just surround the object. We have the one sampling center. We do spherical sampling. And that is not enough because here, on the ground plane, on this plane, we want a very high quality. So I sample it again around this plane, on this plane. Okay, so you sampled the, the, the chair from a bunch of points on a sphere surrounding it. And then you also kind of pack some more samples on the floor plane. So yeah, okay. exactly. So you have occlusion maps from each of those sample points. Yes. Um, Which is cheating. But yeah, sorry. cheating. <laughs> <laughs> that is cheating. No, it's yeah. not. I mean, if, you, if, you move the, if you lift the chair up, you're going to have a, then you're going to well, notice the sample points. Sample points. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the, the um, I mean, you, you in essence have, right, okay. So you could do all of the sort of light field like tricks mm -hmm. to interpolate between those. Yes. But you're probably not doing that, right? Um, and so from a point on the, so we should be able to rotate the chair, right? Actually. I cannot do rotate. Why not? Because uh, I'm doing the, in the project, project function to the wavelet basis functions. If I do rotate, I need to rotate the wavelet filter. Well, there's a global coordinate system <coughs> for the visibility functions, which have you know, the six faces of the cube and a global coordinate. Yeah, but that's an easy. I mean, well, if you rotate all of them, then you could do that. Yeah. If I do a rotation, that will be a flaw in the paper. We cannot do, I mean, theoretically, I cannot support it. So I did not put it here. Okay. And John, I think your question is that the sampling read around the, the occlusion sampling here. But now you, you're saying you sample a lot on the ground plane, so that's yes, your problem. Yes, I sampling a lot. This is only determined by the triangle. Actually, how much did you sample? That's an interesting question. Uh, that is in the paper. Determined on, I did not sample a lot on the surrounding sphere. I sampled a lot on the ground plane, 10,000 at least. Shadows from the chair onto the uh, seat itself. Uh, I did not sampling on this plane. This plane is only the spherical sampling. And I, in the next one, you will see some areas in effect. Oh, no. This is, let's go to the next. Yes. You see here? Some areas in effect here. If you notice that when we change the oper operation, we change the light source, there's a small delay, one or two seconds. That is we are doing the computation, the runtime computation. A short delay. What I like is that in our system, we can create a new, I mean, we can derive, clone new objects, and still have the shadow. I mean, 
this is the, a big difference with, uh, from previous work. The paper is pretty long. When I prepare for the paper, I wrote about 15 pages. And uh, during the submission, I think, I cut it to 11 pages. And finally, the reviewer decided, OK, we give you one more page. It's 12 pages. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the, my work, it's just the, the multiple function product integration. And using a hard wavelet and a small chip to do the real-time rendering, uh, to do the, I call it, give a fancy name, just the in-time readiness transfer and compare it to previous pre-computed readiness transfer. That is a really simple idea, but I like the, the simple things. It's only the simple things that it can work and people can remember and they can use it in their system. And the problem is the rotation. And the heart is not that smooth. And I think there's a family of wavelet filter. And most of the material here in this slide, I have talked about previously in the, in the talk. And for the future work, besides the theoretical one, I think the, <coughs> the another part is that here, the occlusions, the light, the BRDFs, all those, we are doing this, we generate those data using the simulation with your software. In fact, I think all those data, we can get those data from the real world. We can use some device to get those data. And because the, the graphics and the computer vision difference is that one is forward and you know, another one is backward, we can just uh, do some kind of work and generate. I notice that there are some, some image effect that previous work cannot work. But I hopefully, we can follow this direction and generate some some common life stuff and finally make it in real time and apply it in the, in the games because everyone, they want to play game. They want a, a better lighting effect. And, and an, another direction to, to, the, to improve upon, upon this work is that here we are doing the dynamic scene, but that dynamic is very limited. Only the translation, the scaling, even though we can do the, the projective rotation, something like that, not that, I mean, fantastic. The, the thing that we can really do a big improvement is that we incorporate more elements into our system. And we take a very broad hair viewpoint of a whole system, and we find the the problem, we can do it. And uh, for example, we can consider some, some new materials. The motion and animation, there are some lots of, I mean, things that we can combine to make it more general, more dynamic, I mean, more applicable. Yeah, lots of work we can do. Well, how would you handle deformable objects? We, do not, we cannot handle deformable objects. So this one. In games, I mean, it's a lot of deformations. Yes. Uh, in, in games, there are many deformable objects. Uh, <laughs> if you want to really want to support real time rendering of deformable, deformable objects, I think the first one is that you, we need to category the deformable objects and do some optimization. I'm, I'm not, uh, I did not do, do work in that field, but I, I think the right way is that we categorize, find the common features, find the coherence. Well, that, characters, if you want to do characters, they're kind of semi-rigid. So they're not as bad as like a piece of geometry that 
that can just deform arbitrarily and you don't know what the hell it's going to do. Well, like you have a character wearing a, a long flowing robe that you know, changes shape quite a lot. Then. Well, that would be hard, but yeah. if it's just a character wearing tight fitting clothes, I don't think that's. I think you might be able to use some of this stuff. That's why well, for me, you have trees and anime trees that, that moves around and all. Yeah, difficult. Trees are difficult. I'm working on trees. Very, very difficult. But you might be able to parameterize their motions so that they're not quite as flexible as they should be, but you wouldn't know the difference. The problem of the trees is that we don't have the data for the trees. No one captured the data of the trees. It's a matter of the fact. We capture the motion of the human walking, jogging. We did not capture the trees. They're too complex. I mean, the, the dimension, narrative. Right, but, but at the beginning of the talk, mm -hmm. you said those are the problems, right? Yes. And presumably that the goal is to go towards that. Yeah, I think the trees, we can do it. I mean, uh, it's only that some people did not do it, but we can do it. Yeah, it's not. It is complex, but it can be, it is solvable in some tense. There's some work, previous work in, in computer vision part. Kang, Kang Si Bin, they did some work in, in plants. And uh, it's very natural to extend to trees. A trees, it, it, it is really hard. I think it'd be easier to look at the world try to model the geometry of the tree and then use synthetic techniques to figure out what the, say, occlusion fields are. Because it'd be so hard to put measuring devices in every single leaf where you can cast shadows and stuff. And that would just be ridiculous, right? You needed to find a, I mean, a cost-effective way to do it. I mean, you cannot... It's a lot simpler to look at the tree and say, okay, I can kind of figure out its geometry and then just use synthetic techniques to Thank you.